this is something that nobody ever did before and told the story about these. And, and now I think it's, it's a good time to do it. So, you want X away. All right, Kit. Well, <clears throat> really cool getting to see this part of the history. Learning about the cans before there was a billion colors, yes. bi billion hues and, and, and shit, right, and, and all the caps and stuff that come pre-packaged with the different yeah, types of was, fats it, and skinnies, ultra fats, ultra skinnies, it, you got it, all it, these insane it's, it's crazy, tips. It's crazy, it's crazy, it's just so much easier for the, for the writer, or graffiti artist, whatever you want to call them, to just go on uh, and look at a chart and say, um, <laughs> I want this color, this color, and this color. And actually pull money out of his pocket and pay for it. We didn't. We didn't have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was unheard of. I mean, if you told me back in the day, I'm going to go to the store and buy some paint so I can go piece on the train, you would have been called a toy. You know, we didn't pay for paint. We didn't pay for paint. We didn't pay for the trains. There was really hardly anything we really paid for. I mean, I went out of my house with two dollars. I came back home with two dollars. <laughs> I ate. I drank. I racked. And I had a good time. So uh, this is what this is about, man. All these cans right here. So um, you can question me about what can, this, that, whatever. All right. So tell me about the pound can first, Kit. I'm, I'm interested to know what, what what is a pound can. A pound can is um, Rustolium made it. I think the Rustle made a pound can too. Now um, we would run across them from time to time. They, there was something like it wasn't really easy to find. They were in the regular stores. There sometimes you would find them. Um, they, we had a boat store we would get them in, you know, and you get lucky if you if you find them in. This right here, this is a Cascade Green pound can. And um, it carried more paint in it. And uh, the regular cans are 13 ounces. So when we got this, we were we were, we were happy as hell, man. These were good and they spread, especially with Stolium. With Stolium, they spread a lot, man. You could, I, I used to get the blue aluminums and the green aluminums and we would do pieces on the D train with them and they would spread, I was able to get like 12 tropes out of a pound can of the blue or green aluminum the reason why we used the blue or green is because we were going on silver aluminum and, it, and when you do a trope on silver aluminum it looked like you just see an outline so when you use the green aluminum or blue aluminum you would actually see the piece better and that's, that's why we use that in the pound can. They mostly came in pound I think the blue aluminum and, and the green aluminum, I think they all came in pound cans, if I'm correct. And um, that's what the pound can was about. We really, really loved it when we got those, man. It was like we hit a little jackpot, you know. <laughs> like and, um, Christmas. Christmas, yeah. This was also another rare can to find. Sandalwood tan. They were in regular stores. You know, um, like the mom and pop stores you wouldn't find them in. We used to get these, we had a boat store. <coughs> I believe it was either Nourish Shell or White Plains, we would find a lot of these sandal with tans. And um, we were also happy when we got these too, because it wasn't like a common color like the rest of them, like the red, the greens, and um, the dunes tan was actually a common color also. It was similar to this, but lighter. And, uh, where where did you rack most of your paint, Kit? Like, where, where would you say you stole the most paint from? We racked, I mean, all over. I mean, we went, I mean, I had this rather, you know, just... Talk a lot of cock about me not going into neighborhoods when I was piecing this. And that. I went into neighbor. I went into plenty of neighbors. I went into the rack. That's where we went. We went. I went to Brooklyn racking. I was in Queens racking, Long Island racking, New Jersey racking, Westchester racking, Staten Island racking. We would take the boat over there. We went in all those neighborhoods. You good or bad, didn't matter. But most of the bad neighborhoods and the the the, 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 the spots were hot anyway. You know. But we wrapped in all different neighborhoods. What we would do is sometimes <clears throat> we would take a train. And we would go like we would say into Queens. We would take a train. It was a letter train. We'd go into Queens and we would look down. And as we're going, if we seen a hardware store or we seen a Woolworths or something, we would get off that stop. And we would go down and try to rack up. That's how we would find stores. If we seen them, as, as we're going by, we would go down and try to rack. And uh, we, we accumulated a lot of stores, so we would, you know, we would go to certain stores. One day, we had different spots all the time. It wasn't one place we hit hard, because if you hit one place hard, you made it hot, you weren't going back there. So we tried to accumulate as many spots as we can to rack. Spread so we, it out. Spread it out, so we 
We don't keep it. We don't get it hot, you know. And we also wouldn't tell nobody. We couldn't tell nobody about the stores because if you did, they were going in there with an army of guys. And once that happens, you're fucked. You ain't going back there, you know, because the guy's gonna know all this shit. He's gonna look at his fucking his his rack is all empty, saying what the fuck is going on, you know. But we didn't do that either, you know. I mean, we hit stores, but we didn't clean them out like like a, like 50 cans of shot. You know, we would take 10, 15 cans sometimes. We had because we had so many stores accumulated, we can we can get that 50 throughout four or five stores, and that's how we did it. You know. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, I mean, we had, I mean, even in Queens, Steinway, Steinway Street, we had a Woolworths there, we had a Genovese there, we had a, a couple of little mom and pop stores there. We would hit those stores too. So we we had a whole bunch of stores built up, like in um, Westchester, Cross County, White Plains. Scarsdale, you know, I mean, Staten Island, the boat, we would take a, we would take a train to the South Ferry, we would take a boat, and then we would take a bus. That's how we, we didn't have cars at the time. You know, we weren't those guys later on that had their cars, they were to go drive all here and there and fill up their trunks. It was a lot easier to ride like that. We were always on the, we was always on the trains or the buses. That's how we would get around the rack up. It was a little bit harder for us. But later on, some guys, you know, they, they, they started later on, they would, they would fill up their trunks because it was easy for them to drive, like, up in Westchester, deep into Westchester, with nobody knowing nothing about stealing or racking, and they could rack there. So it was easier for them. And that's, the, that's what we would do as far as, you know, going to racking spots. That was it. Kit, tell me about, uh, tell me about other things that you, that you guys rack besides paint, because I know that's, that's not all you guys rack. No, I mean it's like um, when you went racking. We actually we we went out there racking for paint. That was our thing because we wanted to do a piece that day, that night, whatever. But I mean, when you're in the store and you're racking paint and you see something else, you're gonna grab it, you know. And um, other things. I mean, it was when you go racking, you're racking no matter what. I, when we went, we would go racking. When we go in the supermarket about twelve one o'clock, and we would rack our lunch, cold cuts, you know. Soda and stuff like that, and then also we want to make a few bucks. We would rack clothes sometimes, we would, you know, even even like electronics and all that. So we um we had like every store. If it was easy enough to rack, we were racking. If we wanted to make a few dollars, and that store had a camera sitting in there, we can go rack it. We would rack up that camera and try to sell it, you know. All right, kid. So tell me about like. Fat caps and skinny caps back in the day, because you didn't have five million caps. I know we touched no, on this we before. Didn't, we didn't have five million caps. We couldn't go buy them in the store. We couldn't go, you know, select this size. From a chart. Right. I want this one, <laughs> this one, half an inch. I want this one a quarter of an inch. And make this one an eighth of an inch. No, we, we, there was nothing like that, man. What we had to do was like, see with Red Devil, right here. This is um, a Jafom cap. This is actually a remade one. This is not the original one, but it's exactly like it. We would go in um, supermarkets. There was something called your foam oven cleaner, and we would we would just take them off all the all the all the cans we could find there. You know, I'm pretty sure the, the manager would freak out when people were buying the oven cleaner. There was no caps, and he was trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. You know, because he didn't know. You know, nobody had an idea we were, we were taking these for 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 um for fat caps. Only the writers did. You know. So he was freaking out with that. But this was one of them. This was a Jafon. And this thing only worked on a Red Devil. If you tried it on a Stoling or a Krylon, you know, it leaked. So it wasn't it wasn't good for those. Can okay, you hold that one up again? Yeah. A little bit higher. And then um we had um something called a Niagara cap. There, yeah, this is it. This is also a remade one. This was a starch, Niagara starch, I believe it was. But we used this one, and one was called Scotch Guard. There were two different caps. They both worked on Rostos and Krylons, and um, they would make like a like a like a whistle sound. I think they call these whistles now also. Oh, shit. When we would spray with them, they would make like a whistle sound, especially when you were when you were on the ridges, you would hear like like that's how it was spraying so hard. These things are these things are actually good. They sprayed. Sometimes on the, on the, especially in the aluminum, they will come out about 12 inches wide. So a lot, lots of pressure. Lots of pressure, but a, a lot wider than the fat caps today. That's for sure. And, uh, they were good for throw-ups, fill-ins. 
you know, we would use them for fillings. Our designs would be the regular stock caps, like these. Fillings, fillings would be these. The stock caps we would use for, for designs and outlines. They were perfect for that. There were no skinny caps. These were our skinny caps, the stock caps. But these here actually, these were, for, these were excellent for throwies, man. I mean, you could just blast out one right after the other with these, man. We just keep on going on and on and on. And they were great for it. They worked on Krylons. They worked on Rustoleums. And um, they didn't work on the Red Devils, though. Only the Jafomes worked on the Red Devils. And the Jafomes didn't work on the Krylons, nor did they work on the Rustoleums. So that's why we were racking up different kinds of caps, too. You know? All right, cool, Kit. So now, let's talk about, um, talk about the Red Devil factory. Okay, the Red Devil factory was in Mount Vernon. I don't know if you can zoom in, because this is the original can that we used right here. This is the one from the 70s. If you can zoom in, it has stamped Mount Vernon. And, uh... Just hold it there one second. Oh, yeah, you can see that. You can see it, okay? Yeah. Now that Mount Vernon... Just turn it a little bit, Kit, just because they're getting a glare. Oh, okay, perfect. You got it? Yeah. Okay, it's actually right, right uh, it's in Westchester, the border of Westchester and the Bronx. So, uh, they were writers, there was a lot of writers didn't know about this place, but a lot of them did. Especially the guys who lived in the North Bronx, they would know about this. And they would go up there, and, and sometimes lunchtime they would have the door open, you know, for some air, because they weren't keeping the place cool, in the summer times especially. And when the guys went on lunch sometimes, they would just go in there and grab a couple of cases and run out. And it was like easy pickings, you know. And um, that's, what, that's what it was with the Red Devil Factory. You know, it, was, it was by a lot of writers and they, they loved it because they didn't have to go, like us, Queens, Staten Island, they didn't have to go too far. No, you know? that's great, nice and close The only by. thing was they just have to, you know, don't get it hot. A lot of people sometimes when they would rack up, they would just get greedy and just so much of it, like I was saying prior, that you can't go in the store and clean out the rack. You can't do it because you're not going to go back in that store again. No, you're going to get bagged. You know? They're going to be yeah. looking. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, Kit, talk about the, uh, the, the, the federal safety colors. Uh, the federal safety colors. Now, everybody loved those, man. They had fed green, fed purple, fed red. Um, it was a fed blue. They just, they were, they were, they were around, but they were also hard to get. And we were also getting those out of a boat store up in White, White Plains. And um, they were, they would, they always have like an OSHA stamp, OSHA stamp on them. But they were, they were, everybody wanted those, man. All the writers, they, they asked, if you asked them, what colors did you like back in the day? It was fed colors, fed purple, fed green. Personally, me, myself, I went for the fed green and the fed purple. It was beautiful. It was just, it just stood out when you did a piece. It was just, just, I mean... When the, when the train ran, you seen those colors, man. You just said, shit, man. That's fucking bright. That's beautiful, man. And that's why we loved them, you know. But they were in like mom and pop stores, like the regular ones. There were so, certain stores had them, and and we would we would go, you know. Sometimes we would when we wrapped up, we wouldn't go looking for them. If they were there, they were there, you know. It's like when we went wrapping up. Even though we like had an outline and we were going to say we're going to use this color and that color and this color, we didn't have that luxury of, of racking up those colors because sometimes they weren't there. So we had to just rack up what we can that was there and whatever piece that we outlined that day on paper, we worked with those colors. If we were lucky enough, we got the colors that we wanted. If we didn't, we would work with those colors and that's how that worked. It wasn't like we had the chart there to pick out our colors for it. We didn't have that luxury. You know, but it was fun, man. Going racking up and all that was like it's like that's like when you're a kid playing in the playground or whatever. You're going racking up, and all that was fun to us, man. You know, we were just having a good time, man. And that's that with the uh, with the fed colors. How did you guys like rack the paint, like? And it, it was you know different times, like when it was. Summertime, it was harder to rack up because you couldn't rack up on your body much because you couldn't wear the big coats. So what we would do sometimes is we would uh, put them in our socks, you know, and uh, put them, put them in like two of them in front of our pants and, and put the t-shirt over it and walk out like that and just suck our gut in, 
You know, it, it was very hard. And then what we also what we would do is we would have to go in there with bags and just fill up bags. You know, and uh, you know, also sometimes the people broke in stores at night overnight, and they wrapped up. They got hundreds of cans. They would break inside. The, you know, they go from the roof down or back in the gate, and they cut the gate and go in the window, and you'd come off with two, three hundred cans. So you're good for a couple of weeks. But it was it was very hard to rack up in the summer on your body because there was no you didn't have that long coat or nothing that you could rack up in, you know. So um, it was uh, in, in in the winter we would have um, we would have our jackets and um, we would tuck them inside our jackets, tuck them in our back, tuck them in our, the pockets of our jackets, the outside pockets, fill our socks up. We would come out with 10, 12 cans. You know, like that on our body, that was no problem. But in the summer, you're lucky if you're getting between three and six cans a shot out of the store because you have really no way to hide them on your body because just, you're just wearing a t-shirt and pants. And back then we were wearing bell bottoms. So we was easy to put it in our sock. You wouldn't see it because they were white, you know. So we would walk out with them. And I remember one story with Nick. Nick, Nick would put them in his sock for some reason. God bless his soul, man. But he was... He was a funny guy, man. You know, he would. We would hear the ball bearings rattle as he's walking out the store, man. <laughs> Everybody's turning around, man, and he's there, happy-go-lucky, with a big smile on his face, saying, "I got over, I got over." And he's walking out, and these fucking ball bearings are jingling and jingling and shit. We say, "Nick, man, Nick, you fucking making too much noise, man." But, but you know, Nick, Nick was like that, man. He was a comedian, even back in the day, man. Back, Nick. Nick was the same back in the day than he was when I met him, when I ran back into him uh, 10, 12 years ago. Nick never changed. He was always the same. He was always a comedian. And you know, man, it's, it's sad. It's sad that he went, man. It's sad because I know, I know he was about to, he was about to make it with that. He was about to make it with his art. And it's just, it's just sad. But you know, he's in his mansion now. He always wanted to be in a mansion. Right now he's in his mansion. And he's, he's having a good time, man, you know. He's at a much better place, much better. Yeah, I, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna miss him, man. But you know what? He left behind a lot of art. So sure did. He's man. never gonna crazy be crazy legacy, man. Crazy legacy. He's never gonna be forgotten because he oh, he left something good behind for everybody not, to enjoy. Not every artist gets covered by the New York Times. No, like, no, no not at all. That, that, that just goes to tell you who he was and how big he really was, and um. And what he left behind was was a lot of good work for people to enjoy. Well, I have you guys largely to thank for bringing me in with with Nick. Cause yeah, well, Nick is like a from from our childhood, man. He's yeah. Was, I knew him before I had met you guys, but it wasn't until I started hanging out with you guys a lot. That right, I because know you know, him. then you could see how our stories were. Oh, it was amazing. Interlocked with each other, and then you know, I mean, when we were going like towards the end when our crew was gone, we were starting to get real good, man. There was a lot of stuff we were doing that people were starting to do after us too, man. I mean, we were getting real good. It's just that you know we were getting a lot of pressure from from the from the cops, and and then we were hanging out more out in this outside and getting into other things, you know. And, and I mean, we were, we were getting raided a lot. We were getting raided. We were getting chased. It was just a lot at the time because we were we were doing a lot of work, and and the cops were looking for us, man. And we were getting. I, I got ratted on. Some of us got ratted on. It was crazy what a lot of shit was going on because we were catching a lot of heat. Those lines, the fours, the twos, and fives, those were like the big lines back in the day. The cops wanted all the fucking riders that were doing any kind of work on that line. They wanted them. And they would call a rider and say, look, man, I'll give you a free pass, man. Just tell me how to get these guys and set them up. And there were riders who did that. They took that pass and they ratted our people. That's how it was going on. They, they, the new cops go buy them lunch, you know, everything. I wouldn't be surprised if they gave him a fucking get free card, man. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, man. Really? I mean, that's that's how shit was going back then. Imagine that if you were a writer and you were writing people out and, oh shit, you could do whatever you want. You can get up as much as you want. You could do whatever. The fucking yard is yours. What's the fun of that? So you get busted. Big deal. You make a phone call and you're fucking out. Nothing happens to you because you're writing out the other writer. You know? Which is fucked up. No really. Fun. No fun at all. No. It's not a challenge. When you go in the yard, you know you're not going to get caught. It's not a challenge no more either. That's the whole thing too. That rush. It takes out the adrenaline too. Exactly. Like the actual it's like going up to a wall today. 
You know, you, you know, you know, you're not going to get busted. You know, so you can do whatever you want. Relax. When you're in the yard, you can't relax. You know, your adrenaline's going. That's how it is. But if you if you if you were one of those rats back in the day, you can go in the yard and do whatever you want. <laughs> those rats. I mean, back. I mean, even even if you even if you got caught by a fucking a a a, a, a uniform cop or a transit transit cop, we called them back in the day. There were there were different divisions. We they had the transit and then they had the city. They were right around in black and white cars of transit. Even if you got caught by them. You would tell the cop, yo, call this guy up, man. This guy this guy knows me, man. And he would call up that DT that he's working for, and he would fucking let them go. That's how it was. They were big writers that were rats back then. Uh, all right. Uh, so, Kit, out of all these paints, what was the best to use? I don't know if I asked you that question. I just want to make sure I get it again. The best to use, it depends. Like, if you want to, if you want to paint the spread and get a lot, like with throwies, like I said before, the best throwies were probably using the Rust-Oleum aluminum, but you got a lot out of that paint. But the Rust-Oleum was also good for fillings, man, because they covered real good. But if you wanted to like do your designs and like get precise with things and, and do a nice thin outline, you always use this Red Devil. Red Devil was a thick paint and it hardly dripped. I mean, it was almost impossible to drip like this. This is something like Belton today. I actually think this is better than Belton. But these were the main ones we used for the outlines and the designs, the Red Devils, and to tighten up the pieces. Because they were very thick, and they were easy to work with. And then you had the Krylon, but Krylons were, they were a little bit, like, I put them number, I, I'd say number four, because I think a Utilac paint, which is in here, was also better than the Krylon. The Krylons are, um, right here, the Krylons were a little bit watery, just a little bit. But not as bad as the wet looks, the wet looks were watery. But these you can get away with also. You could do you could do fillings and all that, but they weren't as good as the Rustoleums. Well, Not at just, all. What were your favorite colors, Kid? Off the top of your head, do you remember the names? Yeah, here, here's one of them. It's a Cascade Green. This was one uh, of them. I definitely recognize that one. I did a whole car, top to bottom, in Esplanade. I think I used 12 of these cans. <laughs> oh, my God. I just used my three letters back then. I didn't even put a number behind it. And it just... I mean... You could just the smell. I mean, I was as I was leaving, as I was going into the station after I left the tunnel, I could still smell the paint from that day. But this was one of them. Um, Fellow Safety Purple and Fellow Safety Green were, were, were great colors. I also liked um, Krylon had a hot pink and a hot raspberry back in the day. I always liked the brighter colors too. And then Utilac, they had a, a parrot green. And a perky pink. Those were those were the cans I favored most, you know. And the school bus yellow was also good. And this one right here, which was hard to find, the sandalwood tan. I would like this one. I always use this with a dune stand because it's like a shade lighter. It went good with it. Hold that up again, kid. Yeah. yeah. What color is that? This is sandalwood tan, and it always went good with a dune stand because the dune stand was just a shade lighter. And the complimented the pretty good. highlights. You know? That was also another good one. Speedy drives were very hard to find. I mean, these these are like <laughs> almost in a lot of them, man. You couldn't find these in many places, man. Now, what was so special about those? Just because they were so tiny and they like were, they compact? They were tiny, yeah. They were compact. You know, they were easy to rack up, too, because you could actually put them in your pockets, man, and walk out with them because they were so small. Um, I think we had some stores in Long Island. We, in Long Island and Westchester, we were getting some of these, man. But, I mean, we really didn't go after these. If they were there, we would take them. But it was like, they're so small, you really wouldn't get much out of them, you know? Yeah, they were just convenient to Convenient to, for to us rack. to take, exactly, you know? But, I mean, you try to do a filming with this, I mean, you're on your second letter and it's already gone. Right? So, it was... um. It was just something that was there, and we took it. That's all, you know. Where's Where's that? The painting behind you. Where is that from? Where Where are you right there? In that. This is, oh, this one up here. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was uh done by a uh, Australian artist called Karen Farmer, and um, uh, I found her on Instagram. 
And this was done off a picture of me standing on the layer, on the floor layer. I believe this was probably 77 or 78 because I'm wearing the bell bottoms, I remember that. And um, I don't know if you can make this out here. This, is a, this was an ad for a Belmont Park back in the day. This was Maxwell Coffee ad. That's what they used to have back like then. And I believe this, this might have been Fordham Road. I just can't make it up. I'm just trying to look at the buildings in the background. It looks like I was probably on Fordham Road. It's like, like the big, it's probably the beginning of the layup, running all the way up to Kingsbridge and into Bedford Park. That's where, that's where they go. And they used to go, actually used to go also, because layups, sometimes they would lay up long, sometimes they wouldn't. The four layups, sometimes they go all the way from 183rd, all the way up into Bedford Park. And um, it would stop. And sometimes it would go from Fordham Road, all the way up into Bedford Park, or just into Kingsbridge. It, 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 you know, it was, that's the way it was. They would lay them up long, they would lay them up short. You know, it depends. If they had enough room in the yard, they wouldn't lay them up long. But, um, yeah, she paints, she's a good artist. She's a great artist, as a matter of fact. And, um, she did, no, she did good, man. That's she, you know, amazing she painting. Out. She looked out, yeah. She Super did. talented. It is, it that's is. oils, too, right? Yeah, she, she said, I think she said it took two weeks for it to dry before she sent it back out to me. Yeah, oil take a long time to yeah. dry. Yeah, but um, that's me, man. I think it was 17 back then. Going um, to the Zeppelin concerts and Sabbath concerts. And <laughs> yeah, well, I've seen all the pieces where you're throwing up Zeppelin and shit. And yeah, yeah, pieces. well, that's, you know, the, you know, it's like um, people, I seen them dispute the other day about hip-hop and graffiti and this and that. And we were um, we were listening to a lot of rock, disco. It just goes hand in hand with right. the with, so, with, um, with the painting. It doesn't matter if it's hip hop. Music goes hand in hand with it goes painting. Hand, yeah, it does go hand in hand. But back then we were listening to like disco, hip hop. We were listening to, you know, even um, some blues and even some Barry Whites and other, you know, all that. Yeah, all different stuff. types yeah, of shit. Yeah, I mean, it was out there. I mean, there was the music I think out there was something that's... I mean, you had so much more of a choice of music back then, too. Actually, today, people listen to a lot of the same music, man. You had the rock, you had the soul, you had the disco, you had the blues, you know? R&B. I mean, you had all that variety of music back then. You know, it's just, today, it, it's just it's just different. You don't have that variety no more. But, uh, yeah, we would tag our favorite bands in our pieces sometimes. You know, at that time, we were probably going to, we were going to see them in concert, too. They were putting out all the new albums and all that, and every time a band put out an album, they would tour behind it, you know, so we were catching it, like me, I went to Zeppelin, I didn't have tickets, I think they were there for six days, it was in 77, the Garden, Square right? Garden. yeah, Madison Square Garden, I didn't have tickets, I, I went down and I tried to sneak in, all six days, the last night, I handed an usher, fought all the bill, and he let me in. Damn. Last night I got lucky. I was so happy. That's awesome. It was, it was, because it it, it, for some reason that concert, I used to sneak in other ones that was a little bit easier. Even through the felt form, we used yeah, to, exactly. they used to have something called the felt form. But in, inside the garden, it was called the felt form. We used to go in there and out of there and into the garden. We couldn't do it. So that was the only shot I had. I said, let me just try to give this guy some money, see if he lets me in. And he let me in, man. And, I, and it was a great concert, man. It's three Amazing. hours, about three hours. But these are these are these are that's the music we were listening to, and then, you know that, that those were the times going to concerts, listening to music, rock music, or disco, all the other stuff. I wasn't such a dis big disco fan, but I did listen to a little bit of it. I liked the Bee Gees a lot. They were they were great, and um, you know that was that was all with the graffiti. Everything was like with the, with the trains, that the rack, and it's it's all stuff we were doing as kids. Cool shit, just just yeah. enjoying ourselves, growing up, enjoying ourselves. A lot better times than today. I believe. We were out. We, <laughs> I know, I know. we would leave our house like we were going to school, and we would hang out all day. We would get back home. We would go racking. Then we would, we would make sure we try to get back home before three, so we can go home like we were coming back from school. And then we go back out again. So we were out most of the day. We were. We were. I mean, we'd be out. We'd be coming back home 10 o'clock at night sometimes. So the whole day just about we were out. It's amazing. You know? That's how, I mean, that's how it was. You, it, it was every, everything you did. I mean, Nobody there, does that shit no more. No, because they, they, everybody's on their phone these days, yep. man. It's, it's, Fucking it's, sucks. It's just a different world altogether. It's 
not, it's not the same world, but that's All the right. times we live in. Kid, I want to just ask you, uh, yeah, I want to make sure that we give proper credit to uh, the guy who who supplied us with all this great okay, memorabilia look, this, today. These cans came from Cavs and Key, which I want to thank for letting me borrow these. And um, I'll bring them back to you, don't worry, they're coming back. <laughs> but yeah, I want to give them props. Um, these cans here, I, I, there was a story we used to, when we go in the yard a lot, um, you know, someone like Boots. Boots was very particular with his paint. He would go in the yard, but I think there's like one particular time we went in the foyard. I think he was doing a piece with, um, with Knock. It was me, Bear 67, Knock, Mark 98, Cuda, and, uh, and Boots. Boots would always, like, you know that on the bottom of the door of the train they have a little lip. That's where we would line up our paint. But him, he was always particular. He would line up his paint in special colors and he'd have his capsule lined up a certain way. And you couldn't touch him. He would get mad if you go near his paint. <laughs> but he was, people, you know, like, like that, writers had different ways, you know, of going into the yard and setting themselves up. But Boots was like one of those guys who was like, everything had to be perfect. With the colors, the cans, and the caps, and then they were peace. You know, Boots, Boots was out there doing doing work too with us, man. Boots was another guy, man. He was doing some nice work also. We had a good crew, man. We were tight knit. Only when we went out of the crew is when the, we had trouble with other writers, you know. When we tried to go with other writers, peace, and that's when the problem started, man. Well, tell me a story about D three, Kit. What's that? What's that about? That was um. We were racking, and sometimes we would go racking, sometimes we'd have an extra guy with us. And we would go in the store and rack and just have bags of paint. We'd just hang on to the paint while we were going and racking up. You know, we would just travel like that. Because we didn't want to leave the paint out on the street because somebody might snatch it, you know. Because once we accumulated like, like 15, 20, 30 cans, we didn't just want to leave it or even leave it in the garbage pail or nothing because they would grab it and we would go out for nothing. So sometimes some guy would hang out with us, man, you know, he'd go in sometimes and react to it, vice versa. You know, and he'll go in and we'll, we'll watch the paint, and we'll go in and he watches the paint. But one day we were in Queens, I believe it's Queens or Brooklyn, one of those places. It was me and Mark, and um, it's a big window, and we're racking, and we're racking. And there's one of those guys I was telling you about, the plainclothes guys, that walk around in the store and follow you. But this time we, we didn't catch him. We didn't know him. But D was watching him, watch us, after we had racked up. So he said he took the he took the cans of paint, the bags of paint, he said he hit him under a car and he ran in the store. He says, yo, drop the load, drop the load. The guy seen you, drop the load. The guy seen you. So, you know, Mark emptied out his, I emptied out mine. I really didn't want it, but I did anyway. And um, D went back out. And as we're walking out of the store, these two guys stop us. And they say, you come downstairs, because they had like a stairway in the basement. Come downstairs, we, we got to talk to you and check you, man. We think we stole something from you. So they made us empty out our pockets, I'd take off our jackets, look in our pants, take off our shoes, everything. He couldn't find nothing. The guy was so fucking heated, man. Because he says, I fucking seen you guys stealing. Man. I seen you guys stealing, man. What the fuck did you do with the painting? And that day, God bless his soul too, D3, he saved us, man, from getting pinched. Because we definitely wouldn't have got caught that day. But D was there and he looked out good. Man. That's fucking good. Yep. I love stories like that. Yep. Those, That's there great. Was, there were a lot of them back then, man. But he, he did good that day, man. <laughs> I appreciate you coming through and, and taking the time to do this stuff with me, man. Because this is... Yeah, because, a lot of people appreciate the history behind right, it and need to know the always, real there's shit. There's always a story behind these cans, you know? People are going to say, yo, I remember this one here, like I did. I did a whole car with this one. <laughs> and then you have a story, like, yeah, I went to the tunnel that day, I did a whole car, you know? And nobody, you know, nobody ever, you know, really talked about that, man. You know, they always collect them. A lot of the collectors out of there, they collected them, but, you know, there's also stories behind them. Right?
<laughs> and that's the one, Marvin. That's the silver tuna. <laughs>